Hello everyone, this is Archer from Guten Code, uh, and I, this is the start of a number of uh, videos in a series that's going to help all of you guys review your bootstrap and Django knowledge. It's also an interesting way of uh, teaching you guys these concepts in a, in a different way. So to begin, uh, this class is actually going to go over the custom page for Collaborant. We're going to go into making a, actually a fully fledged HTML design for our home page as well as some other pages. And uh, what we're going to end up with by the end of this series is basically this. This is something that we did in class. We basically covered it up to the point of the slider. Um, but our goal is to take basically a, a, a bootstrap provided example and mold it to whatever we need. And this is really the inflection between, first of all, resources that you have available to you as well as your own skills to kind of shape things to how you want them to be. So what I did is I took a bootstrap example and what we're going to do is we're going to, for example, modify the navigation bar to be uh, much longer form and spread out. That's actually going to be referenced off of another bootstrap example. We're also going to modify the slider to showcase our uh, houses and the content that we're looking for. At the bottom here, uh, we're going to have two parts to our content. The first is a little what's called a form a means by which the user can provide information to the website and actually affect what content is displayed and of course on the right side we're going to show all the listings and later on we're actually going to build in features to make these to make this content uh, filter with the kinds of features that we're looking for so let's get right into it with the development of any uh, web page at this point the first thing that you want to start off with is actually getting bootstrap so if you go on the getbootstrap.com website, um, you're looking to download Bootstrap first. Bootstrap is a library of presentation styles offered to you that's going to severely help, uh, significantly help you get started and remove a lot of the legwork in making a fully functional and modern website. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But first, let's just download it. So it's going to take you to this page, and you're looking for this download. You don't want the source code or the sauce. That's something for others. So you can start off by downloading Bootstrap, um, and we're looking for this bad boy. So we're going to show that in Finder, and I want to add this to my project folder. So I want, I've dedicated this Gutenvid folder for all of the projects in this video series. Copy over my zip file, extract that, and that's going to be available uh, in this folder. Now I've organized my project a little bit differently. So what I've done is I want these folders to actually be available in my bootstrap folder, not in this extracted folder. But of course, you could have done whatever you have wanted. You could have, for example, renamed this folder, whatever's comfortable for you. I'm actually going to delete these guys and empty my trash, because nobody wants a full trash can. Yes, please. Great. So now that I've got this started up, let's create our HTML file. So I'm going to open up Sublime Text. This is using Launchpad. Uh, on the Mac, and I want to create a basic index.html page, which is usually the name of the page for our home page. So if I go on Sites, I'm going to look for Gutenvid. Uh-oh, where's Gutenvid? There it is. Cool. Go on Bootstrap and save it here as index.html. The extension.html indicated this is an HTML file. <coughs> Excuse me. So. As with any HTML file, we first start off with the HTML tag, and then within it, we have our head tag and our body tag. Now, as we've known from previous lessons, the head tag is where you're basically going to put all the information about this document, including any meta information for search engines, the title of your document, as well as any uh, links to style sheets or presentation rules for this document. And in the body tag, you're going to actually include the actual content that will be displayed to the user. So to kind of test the waters, let's create a title for the website called Hello World and wrap that in an H1 tag, which is a header. And if we open that up in our browser, um, that's going to show up as so. So that's cool. We've made some headway there. But we're, we really want to leverage Bootstrap to kind of make this design look beautiful. So the way that, as we've known previously, is to, to add a CSS file, we have to use the link tag. We add an href attribute, and within the value of that attribute, we put css slash bootstrap dot css. And I'll explain that structure in just a second. As well, whenever you're linking a CSS file, you always include a rel tag with the value stylesheet 
and a type tag with the value text slash CSS. I think the type uh, attribute is actually uh, optional. So if I save that and refresh the page, now the text looks sophisticated. Looks like it's ready for a $1 billion acquisition. So uh, with that being said, we, have to, we should look back and reconsider really the value of Bootstrap. So if I go back to the Bootstrap home page, um, there's two key components that we want to look at. The first is CSS and components. The big idea is, again, that Bootstrap removes a lot of the legwork that you have to do to get a sophisticated site up and running. And the, I guess the hypothesis is that really most websites are made out of the same guts, the same stuff. The same architecture pervades every sing most website designs. You usually have some kind of top wide bar, con centered content, split content in the form of a grid in order to ensure that it looks a little bit more organized. And Bootstrap really has all of that built out of the box and in fact makes it so that your website's very responsive and responsive to different form factors. In fact, the Bootstrap website is built using Bootstrap. And if you want to see the responsiveness in action, if I resize this window, uh, see the, the content actually adapts to my page so that it always fits and it's always readable. And even for small form factors, even to the level of a phone, you can see that the navigation collapses to the, uh, the hamburger menu that we're actually very useful uh, used to. So if I expand this out, just to give you a brief overview of the kind of stuff that Bootstrap offers, if you go on the CSS page, this offers a couple of what, what I think would be best referred to as structural elements, so just basic things that pervade every web page, including, let's say, a grid, so that your content's organized neatly um, in some sort of uh, grid format, a, uh, some text for your, uh, some styles for your typography, so it looks more modern, things like form styles, so that inputting data becomes really easy and that it looks nice for the user, uh, various buttons, ways of uh, categorizing your images, and even uh, basic helper classes. And then at the top, we also have uh, the components. So now these are individual things that uh, web pages often use, including drop-down menus, navigation bars. We're actually going to be looking at the navigation bar quite a bit today. Uh, things like labels. This is kind of an interesting thing. For example, sometimes people have tags and labels, progress bars, uh, etc. So if you're interested in seeing the full capabilities of Bootstrap, your best bet is to basically go on the page and check these guys out. These consist of instructions as well as a, an example HTML. And if you're not really sure how that was written, you want to right click and click on inspect element. And we'll be doing that quite a bit uh, today. But see, this part, see, it'll show me that this is really the HTML that I'm looking for. And so you would be looking to copy this over and test it for yourself. Um, but the real value is, you know, having imported Bootstrap, you can go through the hassle of kind of going through that documentation, going through that manual, and kind of doing everything yourself. You've already imported the style, so you can basically get started and start building a Bootstrap site off the bat if you know what you're doing and you're very comfortable with the syntax. But if you're not, and you, or maybe you're kind of lazy, Bootstrap actually provides you with a number of examples that help you get started. So if I go on the Getting Started page and then on the right navigation, go to the examples, um, here's a number of different styles uh, that are available to you to kind of help you uh, get your pages up and running. In fact, uh, if you look at the narrow Jumbotron, it looks eerily similar to a site that I made for you guys, the Guten Code uh, class website. Um, yeah, and, and it's totally okay to do this because for your purposes, you want to get your product up as quickly as possible. So for the example that I was showing you earlier of, let's say, a top navigation, a slider, and some content at the bottom, um, that fits really, really well around the carousel. So if we look at this example, you know, it has all of the components that I already need. It has a way of sliding through images in the background. It has my navigation. In fact, this navigation needs some work. We actually want it to be fully spanning the top. And some of the stuff at the bottom, though it's cool that we have this content, that's also going to need to be modified. So the real ex experience with this page is really showing ourselves that we have full control over even examples written by other people. So how do we start with importing examples? Well, we've opened up an HTML page, and let's say we just want to rip this whole thing. We want, the f we want to start with the whole example. 
we would actually right click on our computer and click on view page source and this command should be available on Google Chrome Firefox and some it should be available on modern IE but you might have to do some work although the name of that command is consistent so if you Google view source IE you'll find some sort of instruction to do that so if I click on view page source Chrome will actually show me uh, the HTML content of this web page so what I want to do is I actually want to copy all of this over to my sublime text copy and I want to replace all of this so we're going to save this over and see what happens interesting so it copied over the content but for some reason the presentations really not really not transferring over um, and why is that well if you're doing this for the first time you have to think logically think using what you already know you know that presentation should be located in the head tag of an HTML document so if I go at the top here's the start of the head tag now we have some meta information that's typically for search engines we have the title over here in fact maybe I want to edit that real quick to uh, collaborant rentals rentals for everyone save that oh interesting so here then is the link to the bootstrap library now the way that they've actually linked to the file doesn't seem to be in accordance with the way that we actually have our project folder set up what we're looking is we want the browser to go inside of so starting from wherever the HTML file is located we want it to go inside a folder called CSS and then open up for example bootstrap.min.css Cool. so if we save that um, that should make some headway let's keep going just to make sure we've covered all of the presentation styles um, we encounter this kind of element which is basically a comment this is something for uh, the programmers to basically tell other programmers if they're reading the, the actual source document so here Bootstrap has told us hey don't actually copy this line so we'll delete it listen to them listen to the uh, Bootstrap developers the Bootstrap gods and now here's another interesting thing it seems like the person that wrote this example also created some custom styles on top of bootstrap so when I was downloading bootstrap there's no way that I would have actually downloaded this I actually have to get this from the page itself so if I go back to the source page of uh, of the example okay I want to navigate to the top well here's the line that I'm looking for um, it's this carousel.css it looks like a link so if I click on it oh sweet so I can actually get the source for the presentation styles as well so I want to copy this over click on sublime text I want to create a new file paste it over and save it to be consistent I should keep all my things in a CSS folder and we'll also to keep it consistent save it as a carousel.css so oh thank you sublime text but not tonight so if I want to import this guy, I want to again tell the browser to go inside the CSS folder and find carousel.css. So what happens if I save this bad boy? Wicked. So now we're rolling. Um, you can see I've edited the title, I've got all my CSS stuff down, but it seems like the, uh, the slider is not really working. And there's these weird generic placeholder images stuff. So this is where things get a little bit interesting. We covered HTML, we covered CSS, but we never formally covered what's called JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is a language like CSS or cascading style sheets, but whereas CSS was mainly focused on the presentation of uh, a document and HTML was basically focused on the content of a, of a document, JavaScript is a more sophisticated language that, in one application, affects how that page can be dynamically changing at the same uh, over time. So, uh, a web page is typically just a static document. You write all your stuff in, you write your content, and it just stays the way that it is. When a browser has loaded, what a JavaScript file will do is it allow you to manipulate how that page is displaying that content, what content is being displayed, dynamically. And this happens after the browser has been loaded. So if I go on the carousel example, see the writer has already kind of created this type of document in this kind of format, but what JavaScript will do is like, okay, if I click on this HTML element, it'll actually change the contents of what I'm showing. It'll move some stuff over to the right, and make it disappear, and simultaneously bring some stuff over. As well, if I click on this drop-down, it'll make 
this element present, uh, appear even though it didn't otherwise. So what I want to do is I want to make this JavaScript work. So typically JavaScript files are located at the bottom and they have a JS extension. So here are three of them at the bottom and in fact our lovely bootstrap developers have notified us that they are here at the bottom because they, the page will load faster. Now with the first file I don't actually want to do anything because as you can see in the source attribute the HTTPS means that this is being loaded from a web page so we don't have to really make any modifications here. But the, with the latter two we do. In fact they, t they both exhibit a similar structure to the CSS file and we got to make them in accordance with what we have. So if I expand the JS folder, that's where bootstrap.min.js is located. So I want to delete this stuff. Save it. Now there's this interesting file called docs.min.js. And it'd be really hard to kind of go through the, uh, try and understand what this actually means unless you Google it or, an exper or are an experienced programmer trying to understand this code yourself. But for our purposes, I will just explain to you that um, what this JavaScript does is it automatically generates these placeholder images. So in the olden web days, the medieval times of web development, what developers would often do is they would create placeholder images and kind of just place them, in, uh, place them into the document. They'd, rather, they'd probably do it in Photoshop or something. But this got very, very tedious and in fact, you'd, for whatever reason, for really no good reason at all, um, keep opening this program. And we don't really want to do that. So some JavaScript developer kind of made this cool plugin. However, this isn't available out of the box, much like how Carousel isn't available. So I know I'm going to put it in my JS folder, but what I need to do is I need to go to the original example, and just like with the carousel.css, open the file, copy its contents, make a new file in Sublime Text, paste it, and save it in my JS folder. So I'm going to call it docs.min.js. And I'll close that. And so now, if I uh, go to my collaborant examples and refresh, cool, got the placeholder images. And what happens if I click the carousel? Golden. So in the next uh, video, we're actually going to be focused on now making this our own. We've imported our um, example and the really easy way to handle this would be to go on Sublime Text, find, okay, what text looks similar to what I see on the page. While I have this project name, I can call this Collaborant, right? And if I replace that, great, I see it here. But what I'm really looking for is I want to actually significantly modify this to my needs. So we're going to do that in the next lesson, starting with the navigation.